All right, so you want to remember your sketch and your vision for your landscape as you're cutting out elements. I don't want to cut out all of the green, so I'm going to kind of cut my own with my lasso. Little shards of, of grass still and greenery. But I definitely don't want all of it back here. And I can cut my own edge for a lot of this organic coral. So the lasso tool is the most basic selection tool just because it's so direct. And it's also nice that you can add and subtract from your selections instead of just taking them as is. So I'll demonstrate that really quickly here. So there's my selection, but if I wanna add to it, I can hold down shift and say, okay, I need to get that a little bit closer. If I wanna subtract away from it, I hold down option and say, I don't need it up here and then delete, and I've set it to, to feather at two pixels. So it has kind of a nice even feathering to it. The other great thing is once you've selected, it's like a mask. You don't need to just hit delete. You can use an eraser on it, right? So if I select that and then I hold down shift and I add in this side, this is for that kind of hazy sky that I'm compositing it. And then I use the eraser at 53%. I know I can erase away gently without taking away any of that stem that I want to keep. Whereas if I just do it like that, I'm going to take away part of the stem. So I encourage you to use your, uh, your lasso as a stencil as well when it comes to kind of fine selections. Just cutting out my own tower because this back edge got kind of soft in that photo. So by sharpening it up with the two pixel feather, which is stronger than this is, it's going to look better. Now I've made that selection, now I'm gonna use my eraser selectively. Erase away more in some places than in others. I'm kind of blending that sky. And then Command D deselects. Cut around these blades. And just keep it as rational as you can, as straightforward and clear to the vision of your sketch as you can. So there's lots of what are called undercuts, you know, little areas that are affected. I'm gonna just add to my selections, make a bunch of these. And then just erase out with my tool. 
The only problem with using the lasso next to a guide that's active is the lasso will want to stick to the guide. And we can change that setting, but it's it's usually I want the last the the tools to stick to guides, so I just want to be careful around it. Hmm, I like that actually. Okay, so that top edge I'm pretty happy with. Now as it gets down into here, I'll go to this this edge. It's pretty tricky in here. So I think it's gonna try to do it all with one lasso selection. Do it in sections if you need to. Remember you can use option and shift to add or take away. Option to take away, shift to add. But you can get pretty precise with the tablet with some practice. And that two pixel feather is definitely helping me out. Not everything has to be so exact. I'm trying to find the sharp edges here. I like that pop of color of the red, so I'm going to keep that little red leaf. Take away from right there. I cut it a little too deep. Take away from right there. I'm holding down option in order to modify my lasso selection. You can use that with any selection tool, option to subtract. I want to do the same thing inside here. Follow that leaf. But now instead of just deleting, I'm going to use that low opacity eraser tool I'm going to add this bit into it so instead of just hitting delete which will really punch it out like it's very different I want this to blend in more so I'm going to use that eraser tool it's at 53% And then I get to kind of directly choose how much gets erased and why in the different areas. And same thing with this. I'm going to use my lasso. I'm going to cut around the sharp edges I want to keep. And then instead of just hitting delete, which will look pretty artificial, like I can show you even with the two feather, you know, that looks a little artificial. I'll use my eraser and use the selection as a stencil and then kind of softly, softly erase, especially darkening into the V, which is a good illustration trick. Or if you have a V shape, you want to kind of darken into that. It will help set it off. And where else do I need to maybe get rid of some? Maybe in here. Some things are easy to select out. And some things are a pain. This has a lot of little shapes. But by having kind of a method that I can return to, it takes a lot of that pain away from it. Because my stenciling with the lasso is giving me a sharp edge. Even if my whoops, even if my brush isn't a sharp edge, hold down shift, add to it. Another little undercut that I can erase up.
Of course, you don't want to have to do this with every little space between every leaf. So you're choosing your the ones that don't blend in well, the ones that are focal points. You're just trying to sell the believability of the composite. Yeah, and that doesn't bother me now. So all of that's good. Now I just gotta cut out this. Now this is a pain. Just fronds. So I'm gonna be a little arbitrary about it. I've already gotten rid of the hard edge part of the selection. So now I'm using the lasso to draw the hard edges I wanna keep, and then I'll use that soft edge eraser to blend it and erase away from it. And if it's not perfect, I can be kind to myself. Because <laughs> this isn't the focal point. Because I am trying to refine it, I don't want to be too sloppy. And I can do a section at a time. That's a pretty big chunk right there. Take my eraser. Blend it back. So that stencil really helps. It will only erase where stencil is. Get me inside here. Create my own hard edge. So the best reference photos to use for compositing are always sh sharp and in focus. Because a lot of my decisions are made here not based on you know, what I think would be best for my landscape, but based on getting rid of the things that are in soft focus. And so you just want as few limitations as possible in how you can use your material. But it's also good to be able to adapt to whatever situation you find yourself in. And that's where the creativity comes from. And when you control edge control, like the soft and hard edges like I'm trying to do, you can make something that was a really small miniature that was photographed, like this little piece of coral, where you have focus pools and macro effects, and you can make it look massive in the landscape. And that's a big part of compositing. All those vehicles in the Mandalorian, you know, are just little miniatures that they shoot in a desert <laughs> because they're able to composite in the foreground, the middle ground, the background, you know, they can make them look a whole lot more impressive. Oh, that's annoying. Let's see. So sometimes when you terminate your selection too early, it kind of cuts across itself and makes it so it's not stenciling what you want. I got over ambitious with my shapes. So I'm just gonna do one section at a time here. And just like stenciling and erasing would be, <laughs> it's tedious. Sometimes the detail part of artwork is, so you decide what's worth the effort. And again, this is so much easier because these are not man-made objects, right? I can always cut into a, a palm frond and no one's going to know the difference if I reshape it to something else. But if this was something man-made, like a mailbox, and I cut a big chunk out of it because it's not in focus, well, that's going to draw attention. So organic stuff is easier to composite with than man-made stuff. That's the lesson.